Gambling is a risky activity that many people enjoy, either for the adrenaline rush or for the pursuit of a quick fortune. Gambling is easily addicting and could take away a person's common sense as well as push them to commit outrageous acts. Today's case is one that shows a gambling dispute that ended in misfortune. Let's take a closer look at the Eight Immorals Restaurant Murders, also known as the Pork Bun Murders. Macau, officially the Macau Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, is a major resort city located near Hong Kong. Having legalized gambling in the 1850s, Macau is a top destination for gambling tourism and is even said to be larger than Las Vegas in the United States. However, many people aren't aware that among these glamorous gleaming lights and towers, there are many cases that have left a mark on the history of this Vegas of the East city. Taking place during the time Macau was still under Portuguese rule, the Eight Immorals Restaurant Murder Case is one that left quite an impression on its inhabitants. This case started with a man named Huang Zhehong. He was born in mainland China with the birth name Chen Shuliang. Almost nothing is known about Huang's childhood or his life in China. Not even the names of his parents were written down. Huang was said to have immigrated to Hong Kong in the 1970s and settled there for quite some time. He did not, however, live a typical life in Hong Kong. He was frequently involved in various kinds of crimes, most of the time related to money. As a result, Huang had several names, including his birth name, Chen Shu Liang or Chen Yu Liang. He was also continuously on the run. In 1973, Huang's money-motivated desire drove him to murder a man. According to reports, this unnamed man owed Huang money, but was unable to pay him. Tired and angry at having to demand his money, Huang approached the man at his house in Quarry Bay and killed him. After the murder, Huang fled to Guangzhou, southern China. To make sure he would never be linked to the crime, Huang went as far as to sever the tip of his left index finger and burn his fingerprints off. Huang rented a place to stay in Guangzhou for a few years. Here, he became acquainted with his landlord's daughter, Miss Li. The two eventually grew close and planned to get married. However, her side of the family was against the relationship. They wanted Li to marry a good man. In their eyes, Huang was not a good man at all. The couple eventually eloped and fled to Macau together. It was not long before he got involved in illegal and gambling-related issues. Among the many people Huang met during his gambling addiction, there was the Zheng couple. Zheng Lin, a 50-year-old man, frequented gambling dens with his 47-year-old wife, Chen Huiyi. The couple owned a restaurant in Yaohun, a suburb of Macau, called Eight Immortals. Prior to opening his restaurant, Zheng sold street food. At the time, the restaurant was run by his entire family. It was a successful business, but Zheng and his wife were known to have gambled away their fortunes whenever they could. In one gambling match in 1984, Huang and Zheng were making high-stakes bets. The gamble ended badly for both Zheng and his wife, bringing their loss to 180,000 patakas, or around $20,000. Huang made Zheng agree to a deal for the debt. It stated that Zheng and his family had to give up their restaurant's mortgage to Huang if the debt was not repaid within one year. Rather than staying away from gambling, and focusing on repaying their debt, Zheng and his wife Chen kept challenging Huang to multiple rounds of gambling. They continued to make high bets, despite the big debt they were in from previous matches. With Huang emerging victorious after each round, Zheng and Chen's debt to him increased significantly to 600,000 patakas, or just over $75,000. 
Even though the amount of debt increased, the agreement didn't change. The couple still had to pay Huang back within a year, or else he would take over the restaurant. As time passed, it became clear to Huang that Zheng wouldn't be able to pay him back anytime soon. Impatient and irritated, Huang approached the Zheng family on the evening of August 4th, 1985. Nine members of the family were busy preparing for the next day after closing the restaurant early. Huang demanded the Zheng family pay him his money. When he didn't get what he wanted, he told them they could pay 30,000 patakas first, but then lowered that amount to 20,000 patakas. The Zheng family either didn't have the money or felt reluctant about giving it to the man. Huang mentioned the deal that was made about the restaurant ownership. He told them that if they were not going to pay him, just give him the restaurant. Of course, Zheng Lin refused once again. The bickering continued with no end in sight. Eventually, Huang had enough and became aggressive. He reached for an empty beer bottle, broke the end off it, and turned it into a weapon. He then dragged seven-year-old Antonio Jiangguande, the only son of the Zhang couple, and held him hostage. He held the broken bottle to the child. Huang then instructed the family to tie and gag each other. They cried in terror, fearing what would happen next. Suddenly, one of the female family members broke free and started screaming. She ran to the exit to seek help. But Huang quickly grabbed her. Huang stabbed her in the neck and killed her in front of her family. He then killed the other family members one by one, either by strangling or stabbing them with his makeshift weapon. After counting his victims, Huang realized one of the family members who worked at the restaurant, Zheng Lin's relative, wasn't present. Unfortunately for the woman, Huang knew where she lived and went to lure her to the establishment. When she arrived, Huang killed her for a total of 10 victims. Over the course of the next eight hours, Huang cleaned up the bloody scene and dismembered the corpses into pieces. He then put the cut-up pieces into plastic bags before throwing some into the ocean and others into trash bins across the city. He then rummaged through Zheng Lin's safe after obtaining the key from the deceased's pocket. He retrieved some money as well as important documents for the restaurant. He spent the night at the Zheng's residence, which was located nearby. The death of the Zhang family didn't go unnoticed. The next morning, the driver of a truck that delivered ingredients and other necessities on a daily basis found a piece of paper attached to the front door of the restaurant saying the establishment would be closed for three days. The sign was strange because the delivery man hadn't been informed of the closure in advance. The driver then headed to Zheng's residence to ask the owner about the notice he saw on the front door of the restaurant. He was confused when Huang, a man he didn't know, opened the door to the home. The delivery man inquired about Zheng and the closed restaurant. Huang told him that the entire Zheng family had left for an urgent trip to China. The driver apparently thought nothing of it and left. Three days after the murders, Huang reopened the restaurant and started managing it on his own. A few days later, on August 8th, eight mutilated limbs of the victims were found by a swimmer at Haksa Beach. Police were notified immediately and the limbs were taken to be analyzed. At first, it was assumed that a group of illegal immigrants or smugglers from mainland China were eaten by sharks after their boat capsized. However, a more detailed analysis showed that the limbs had been cut off neatly and not torn apart. Officials concluded that the body parts belonged to at least four different individuals. This prompted authorities to look into reports of missing people. Over the following week, police found more body parts that washed up on different beaches in Macau. 
The horrid discoveries caught the public's attention and eventually the distant relatives of the Chung family. Apparently, all of the Chung family members who ran the restaurant were unreachable for days. Feeling that something wasn't right, the relatives reported the entire family missing to the police. It wasn't clear how the police were able to come to this conclusion, but it was announced soon after that the limbs belonged to the missing Zheng family. During their investigation, police noticed that the Eight Immortals restaurant had continued to operate, but was run by Huang Zheng. Although they found it a bit strange, they couldn't immediately arrest Huang as he had in his possession the ownership documents for the restaurant. They still kept an eye on him though. It didn't take long for authorities to also notice that Huang had rented out the Chung family's residence to collect more money for himself. This highly suspicious act prompted the police to look through Huang's bank holdings. There, they found documents belonging to Zhang Lin, along with his children's student IDs. These clues made an arrest warranted. Sensing he was about to get caught, Huang attempted to flee to mainland China. But he was caught and detained on September 28, 1986, a little over a year after the murders. Even though he didn't outrightly confess the murders in detail, police clearly knew that he was involved with the crime. On October 2nd of that year, Huang Zhehong was charged with the murder of all 10 members of the Zhang family. Four days later, on October 6th, he confessed to investigators the details of how he killed the Zhang family. Police apparently suspected that Huang had an accomplice. But due to a lack of evidence, they couldn't pursue the matter further. Huang's time in prison was short. After his conviction, he was beaten by a fellow inmate for an unknown reason. He also tried committing suicide, but failed. He tried again on December 4th by slashing his wrist with a bottle cap and succeeded. Huang apparently left a suicide note and sent a letter to a local newspaper saying he didn't commit suicide because of the weight of his crime, but rather because he had chronic asthma and wanted to get rid of his illness. After Huang's death, a rumor started to swirl. An urban legend emerged related to how Huang operated the Eight Immorals restaurant after killing its owners. People said that Huang took the flesh of the victims, chopped it up, and turned it into filling for pork buns for customers to eat. The rumor was this made it easier for Huang to get rid of the bodies. This urban legend was well known among locals and some even dreaded the fact that they ate at the restaurant after the murders. Remember, only the limbs were found. What happened to the other parts of the bodies? This urban legend and the crime itself was made into a movie in 1993 titled The Untold Story. The movie depicted a traumatized and fictionalized version of the crime. The Eight Immortals restaurant was eventually seized by the police. It was later sold multiple times to different owners. While the restaurant and the apartment above it had been mostly abandoned, it became a part of the Bakshin Hotel. This tragic and horrifying story of the murder of the Chung family has been forgotten by many. But we should still remember the victims and pray that they rest in peace beyond the living world. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.